Um, on the internet, they're calling it the death spin. Uh, if you've crashed your drone and get no power, you're going to end up ordering these wires here. And you'll put them in, and if you're lucky, because the wires get ripped out, basically. If you're lucky, everything works good. If, you're, if you have this called the death spin, where it just spins round and round in circles, or it's everything's just all messed up, it's because this motor got damaged. If you order the brand new motor, you won't be able to pull it apart like that. See how I can pull that apart? This shaft has come off of here. Once that happens, um, it's, it's not going to be able to be calibrated, because especially since this shaft here is now able to spin freely. You can get it tight sometimes, and then it comes loose. And uh, so I'm going to show you the only solution until today is uh, send it in to one of the three repair stations, Unique or I can't remember the other two places. And it's about $165 to get it calibrated. So this is going to save you $165. We're going to make it so we can, they have a special software they use to calibrate it. And basically they can get one of these motors. This, this is the magnet here that it, there's a sensor that reads off of it. Um, when they're manufactured, the magnet goes on just randomly wherever. So when you put it on, they hook up their special software and calibrate it to wherever that magnet is. Well, we're going to be able to take one wherever the magnet is, a brand new motor, put it in, and we're going to calibrate it manually. Um, basically, that sensor down here, as long as we can move that sensor and make it stay where we put it and get it lined up where we got everything the way we want it and it doesn't do the death spin, we'll be happy, right? So, inside of here, there's a part I actually already fixed this one. It had the death spin. Now it doesn't. There's a part just like this. And a chip lays in here with the sensor. The sensor senses this magnet right here. Well, actually, that wire is going to go up to the side. Senses that magnet. Well, here's a 3D printed version of it. But as you can see, the chip lays in, in here and it can slide back and forth. So, yeah, it slides back and forth, but you're still only limited to a small amount of sliding back and forth. Well, that magnet could be anywhere around in there. So, pretty much you'll be able to put it in just like this, and you'll be able to get the death spin to go away. And if you're lucky, it was the correct one of the four positions that you're going to be able to change the position of the motor on, which I'll show you that in a little bit. If you're lucky, you'll be able to get the death spin to go away. And when you go to rotate it, when it's on here, if it rotates smoothly around when you go to your use your remote, but if it goes and it goes a little bit and then it kind of hesitates and stops, and then you go the other way and it hesitates and stops, that's not the right position on. There's like you're gonna have to take the the motor off of here and then you're gonna have to move these three these four bolts and shift it to one position put it all back together and try it again Is that, I know it sounds like a hassle then you get it all back together and for me I was lucky on my second try so I guess that's like rolling dice on my second try I was able to get it to I found the right spot where it didn't um, where it would rotate smoothly around and not have the death spin and then the, the next problem we'll face okay I'll go ahead and Get this off here. Okay. So, then as long as you get it cal calibrated using this, you're, while it's up there, if it's spinning around, you're going to stop, slide it over like with the screwdriver, move this setting, and then then if it's not spinning, or it might start spinning the other way, that means you went too far, then you go back a little. But, um, then you might get done, it might be pointed backwards, might be pointed sideways. So, 
that's right underneath here. Let me go ahead and get the screw out so I don't rip any wires on accident. Okay. You'll see I ended up having that problem. And my problem was not just that it was sideways or backwards. It was actually on a slight angle. So this is something you, if you get to that problem, you may have to do this. I drilled a few more holes in this cover here. And pause it. Okay. So anyway, and then once you, if you do have to change it, not uh, 90 degrees, but 45 degrees, you're only going to be able to get two screws in because there's just not enough space. To, I tried drilling holes here. There's not enough space to get screws in there. And you may not need that. It depends on how far off. When you get everything, the depth's been away, and how far off it is from pointing straight forward, whether you'll have to do that. But this is really a simple, simple part here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark my front. Instead of using a marker, I'm going to use a piece of tape with a little pointer on it. Okay, so... And then it'd be nice to, when you get these motors, here's, here's one of the motors, how they arrive. This is actually the one I took out and I replaced with this new one. They come with these wires you need to solder them on yourself. So if I would unsolder these right now, it would make things a little, a little bit easier. Because then I could pull this off. But um, you could just take it, well, if you had the death spin, let's just say, you're going to have to replace this motor anyway. And none of this is really going to be relevant. But when you get to that point, if you needed to drill holes, you can just take it apart this far, drill your two holes if you have to do a 45. If not, if you have to do a 90 degree, well you just take it off and you rotate it 90 degrees and put the screws back in. Right? I covered that. I don't need to, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the way I took it off. Got my pointer there. Just going to leave it in there. And I'm going to put the Put two screws in. Okay, I'll get those screws in. I'll be right back with you. Okay. Now, there is a video out there for changing this motor. Where he's actually just changing the wire. Because if your motor's not bad and you just rip the wires out, you don't want to change this motor. And if you happen to purchase the one that includes the motor and the wires, then you're going to want to unhook all these little tabs. Take them out and then run it through there and put them back in the same position. Now there's a a video out there that someone has that he believes it's easier. Well, I'm talking and taking this apart at the same time, but he believes it's easier to um, not take this ball loose and to instead thread the wires down through there when the connector's off. It's not that hard to take this ball off. I wouldn't bother with that. I would just do do what I'm going to do right now. Take this cap off. Right. Um, there's a sticker right here. You're going to want to put the sticker back on when you're done. So for me, I saved a little piece of plastic here to stick it to. Okay. Then... Um, we're going to remove these two screws. All four of these screws here, remember this, will be the short ones. And all the other screws are long ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause. I'll come back and I'll have all these screws removed. Alright, all those screws are removed. I'm just going to kind of spread these out a little. Take that off. Um, this one here, you can actually... Take it off now before um, before you take this ball loose. Huh. I'm gonna keep a little by little wiggling it off. 
off, okay. Then do the same with that other. There's a way to somehow get this out of there. Okay. So I got all these parts off now. Um, in order to get to these screws over here, this is in the way. So there's just there's four screws right here we need to remove. I'll pause it and I'll come right back when I got these four screws out. Okay, I'm on the last screw. Now the ball's going to come loose. So from this point on, I'm going to be... Big hands would help here. I'm going to be holding this ball in my hand. And you don't have to worry about losing track of this. Because see how the wire goes the one way? When you put it back together, it'll be obvious that it goes the one way. So for this whole procedure, I'm going to hold the ball in my hand while I'm working over here. And there's there's enough slack here, but you don't want to um, pull too hard because you could rip them wires out and then you'll be working on something else. So anyway, this is actually the same procedure for changing the motor right now, but um. I'm going to take these three, these are the silver ones out of the circuit board here. And I already have that one of those 3D parts in here right now. Um, this is the factory one and this one that's in here is the one I made, printed and uh, and then I did have to shift my motor one spot. You'll see this wire right now. It's going from here across the top. And before it used to go down through here and into the motor. But that's because I had to turn my motor 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that one. This is the one that powers the motor. And then this one here. It um, goes to the drone. Okay, so now I can lift this back. And now you can see the 3D part that's in here. I'm going to remove these three screws, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm taking the last screw out. And like I said, this is the part that saved me from the dead spin. The position I had to put it in was almost all the way to the side over here. It's not, yours is going to be different. But I slid it over to there, everything stabilized, I got to the remote, rotated around, everything rotated smooth, I was done. But um, at, but when I actually first put it on, I had it all together and I did not have these uh, all these covers on. And it was spinning a little to one side and I adjusted it some and you know back and forth a little till till I could kind of tell that it wasn't going to spin around you know you can kind of give it a bump sometimes and it'll start the death spin I can bump it one way or the other and it pulled itself back nice and solid so this is how if you put it all together if you put this part in and then adjusting it you can get it to stabilize but it when you rotate it with the remote, it has some spots in there where it hesitates, then um, you're going to need to remove these three, these four bolts here and turn it 45 degrees, which like I had to see how the motor wire is coming out the side this way. When I had to come out the side this way, I had to go up and over. That's probably the hardest way to get to the connector for the motor is the position I'm in now. Any other position would be easy because if I had to turn it the other way, the cord's going to be closer. If I had to turn it this way, it would be even closer. I could probably run it back through the original hole and then up and around. So, hopefully this is enough information I've just given you. Um, Alright, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. Like I said, this particular situation I got by having to remove these bolts and turn my arm in the this position where the wire comes out that side it's the farthest away from this plug 
and all the other situations should come out easier to uh, connect that plug. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a demonstration on on that while I'm here. And I'm going to put it back together and show you how I calibrate it while it's on there. The manual calibration way. Okay. Alright, we're, we're back at that spot. I put all this back together just the way it came off. This is where the motor wire comes out. We're just going to go across the top. We're going to take it, not run it through the normal route. We're going to go across the top. And it'll reach right into there. Plug that one in. If you were in some of the, if you had the motor rotated this way, then you could run it up from that side. And if, it, if the motor is rotated where the wire is over here, you could run it through the hole that it, that it normally comes through when the wire is in the back. Maybe. If not, just run it up the side. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it, this time I'm going to put it back together and uh, leave all the plastic off. Then we'll go ahead and mount it up here. And you'll be able to take a small screwdriver. And you'll be able to push the sensor back and forth, you know, just a little bit at a time and see how it reacts until you get it in a good spot. Okay, I'm putting this gimbal head back on here again. You may not want to put all four of these screws in here because, I mean, you could get lucky in the very first try. Um, you'll be in the right spot. But... You know, odds are you might have to take this back off two or three times. The worst case would be the fourth time because we're going to try it if it has those hesitant spots in it when we're rotating it around. And that means you have to take it back apart, remove those four screws, turn the arm 90 degrees, put the four screws back in. But, so for now, well, I'm just going to put all four in. Of course, we're going to put this... Um, sensor here on uh, and then remember these are the four small screws all the other screws for this setup are long ones and these are going to be the four small ones short ones so I got it other than I took this part of part over here I'll put this together real quick okay I'm, I'm I wouldn't have needed to take this apart. I just wanted to show you guys that you would have to uh, either try it, change it 90 degree position possibly or maybe even a different position than uh, 90, like 45 degrees. And that's why I only have two screws because I had to do the 45 degree choice to get mine straight after we were all done. So we're going to assemble this, test it, um, slide that thing and then we're going to use the remote and we're going to spin it if everything spins without hesitation there's no death spin everything's correct but it's pointed off to one side then we'll have to open this end up and do something under here hopefully it's pointed 90 degrees or 180 degrees and then you can just use the holes that are there if not you're going to have to add your own holes and if it's not 90 or 180 you're going to have to You'll only be using two screws here. Okay, guys, I hate to do this because I got my, after like a month of it not working and me not wanting to spend $165 to send it in, um, I finally got it working. It's, as you can see, it spins around very smoothly all the way around. That's the goal. Um... Okay, well actually we ran into a problem here. Look, after, I must have moved something a little. You see how it's wobbling around like that? Then you can kind of push it and get it to go past and everything's good again. At least it's not doing the death spiral. But to, uh, to adjust this, we'll go ahead and do it right now. I'm gonna slide that thing one way or the other and we'll see what happens. And I'm gonna I believe I need to go this 
way a little bit. Okay, I'll just slid it. Slid it some. Let's try it again. try every before I go and remove all the bolts I'd go slide all the way one way and the other with that make sure because when I first put this tried it in this position you know with the four screws um, it was it had two dead spots like when it rotated found two dead spots that was on one side of the slider when I slid it all the way to the other side it um, worked perfectly like this so there we go. Now that I got it, I'm going to also kind of test it this way. Push it a little. Should have the same resistance going both ways. Which it does. And all I did was just then, it was off. And it had that little hesitant spot. But now I'm just going to go ahead and show you like I was going to do to begin with. I'm going to put it way out of whack. I'm going to slide it over. And now we should be able to get the death spin here. See that? That's something you don't want. You can kind of stop it, but it's... You get a little push that way, you're fine. You do a little push that way, and it goes into the death spin. That's... That's what we were trying to avoid. And then all, all you gotta do is... Move that adjuster into... Whichever position works good. And then now you're... Back in business. It looks like the... The gimbal's a little crooked right now, just because it... Went into that death spin. And then from here, um, like I said, when you get done, if your home position is not facing forward, then you're going to want to remove this top cover and turn that to where you're the direction you need to get it to be facing forward. Hopefully, like I said, it's 90 degree or 180 off. If not, you're going to have to drill two holes in there and then just use two screws to get yourself facing the way you want to. Okay, sorry that was such a long video, but I'm pretty excited that, you know, everyone now is going to be able to save $165. Plus, I heard it takes them like a month. They're, they got a lot of work to do. So, you could order this. Actually, when I ordered this part, it said it was on back order. I went ahead and ordered it anyway, and I got it like a week later. So I don't know if, why it says order, but um, I think it was twenty, might have been thirty dollars, and then I think you could buy just this wire by itself. It, it must be twenty just for the wire, and thirty if you buy the set with the wire and the motor. And then, like I said, the best way to check is if you have this motor in your hand. This should be solid. If it's spinning freely like it's doing here, when I grab this, then that means, or if you can pull it like that, it's coming apart, you need to replace the motor. High chance when you replace that motor, it's gonna do the death spin. So that's where you're gonna need to change this part out with the other part that's inside. That way you have the ability to slide back and forth with that chip, the sensor chip. Now, I didn't really show that either, I guess. The sensor chip, which normally fits in this spot, is going to fit in this slot here. And, and like I said, since I can adjust all the way around, you may have to remove the motors or the bolts on the motor. Turn that 45 to 90 degree angle, put them back in. Hopefully that'll work. If not, you have to try it again. One of those four positions, possible positions, you're going to find your correct spot that you need. Happy flying.